Donna Hetzler is an award-winning author, and in her book, Walls of a Warrior, she empowers women everywhere to conquer the fears of our hearts. You'll meet Donna Hetzler here on Babby's House. Stay tuned. It's coming up next. Hello, everybody. I'm Babby Mason, and welcome to Babby's house. Thanks for joining me today. You know, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in him. And this is a day to conquer our fears. And my guest, Donna Hetzler, has written a beautiful book called Walls of a Warrior. It's about conquering our fears and tearing down walls that keep us prisoner. You're going to enjoy this conversation and it may even empower you to begin dealing with some walls that might need to come down in your own life and dealing with some fears that maybe keep coming back to haunt you. We'll talk about that and a whole lot more here on Babby's House. But right now I want to give the glory to God. I want to continue to do that in this beautiful song called Jesus Reign. From the city to the countryside, from the mountains to the valley wide, from the river to the ocean tide, Jesus, Jesus Reign. From the city to the countryside, from the mountains to the valley wide, from the river to the ocean tide, Jesus, Jesus will reign. Jesus reign, reign all over the world today. Let your name be glorified in the Show us how to live. Jesus, Jesus, reign, reign in the church, Lord. The church, let your kingdom come. And in our homes, let us all be one. And in our hearts, let your will be done. Jesus, Jesus, reign.
Families come in all sizes and shapes. Sometimes your friends are your family by choice, or sometimes you're just stuck with Uncle Charles. But what we know is that you want to protect the people that are close to you. But the flu can unravel everything. Your flu vaccine protects you and your family. No matter what draws your family together, protect yourself, protect your family. Everyone needs a flu vaccine. Open through the day, you always seem to find the easy way, moving like you rolled in the grave. Never heard a word I say. All over America, entire families are backsliding. We're no longer just sedentary, we're stationary, and that's bad news for your bones. At any age, bones need weight-bearing activity to grow strong and stay strong. So go outside, take the steps, play with the dog. Just get up, get out, get moving. Never keep your bones that way. Never heard a word I say. A public service message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Pretty much a good day for me would be people leaving their hands off of me. I'm always called names. Um, everywhere that I go, there's always someone um, calling me names, calling me gay. I've been choked, thrown up against a wall, punched. Nobody's ever tried to help me. Welcome back to the show. I'm Babby Mason, and this is Babby's House, and today I'm talking with Donna Hetzler, and she is the author of Walls of a Warrior, Conquering the Fears of Our Hearts. And it's a powerful book that she's written, a book to help us to tear down the walls that, that uh, put up fortresses around our hearts and helping us to, dear, to deal with our fears. Donna, welcome to the show today, my friend. Thank you it's so good. much for having me. It's honored to be here. An honor to have you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for being here. And this is a powerful book, Miss Donna. It is. It's a book called Walls of a Warrior. And does everybody have walls? Well, it, I certainly didn't. Well, uh, okay. <laughs> Teasing, of course. Of course. Yes, but I didn't recognize that I have walls. And I, I believe everybody has walls to some degree. And it's what we do with those walls. Do we stay behind them and let our fears reign? Or do we step out and break down those walls and live to the fullest like God has created us to? He wants us to have a full life. And he tells us to fear not over and over again. And you know... Abby, if God says it one time or a million times, that one time should be enough, yes, shouldn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yes. So how did you come to the knowledge that you had built up walls in your life, walls around your heart, walls of fear, uh, walls of denial? I mean, let's, you know, the, the list is endless. It and sure every, is. And everybody has them. But how did you come to the knowledge that there were walls that you had built and you began to deal with them? Well, it began with a conversation. I have been involved with a ladies' Bible study for over 11 years. I do life with these, these women, and it has just changed me. They have pointed me to Jesus more than anybody. But we were having a conversation, and one of the women said, we have walls. And of course I did this. What? What are you talking about? We have walls. I don't have walls. Do I have walls? I think I'm pretty transparent. <laughs> and they're just rolling their eyes at me going, we all have walls. So we went on this journey together and we decided we're going to meet once a month for 12 months and we're going to discuss our walls. What are they? And do we have walls with God? Do we have walls with others? And then what types of walls do they have? So in my book, I, I walk us through that whole journey. Our group of women became known as the Jericho Girls, bringing mm. down the walls of Jericho. And what God is doing with this book, Babby, has just blown me away. Because, you know, we, we have such a small concept of God. We make God so small, but he is huge. Yes. And now he is planting Jericho girls in churches. And these women are going, I 
want to be a Jericho girl. I know I have fears. My church where I'm at at Southeast Christian Church, we have four ongoing Jericho girls groups. We have churches throughout the Denver metro area. I am just so excited that I can come alongside with God, of course, and take women by the hand and empower them and say, we can do life together. This is what we were supposed to do is live in freedom. Yes. You know, I can hear women because I'm because I'm hearing the voice in my own head, mm -hmm. um, you know, that says, hey, all I got to do is just muster up the strength mm -hmm. and 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 have more confidence and and look better on the outside and, you know, self talk myself through it. And, you know, all the things that the world might tell us to do. Yes. So how do we begin to to not just come out from behind the wall, but tear that wall down yes. and walk into freedom. How do we come out from behind the, the walls of fear mm -hmm. and intimidation and guilt and the walls that we erect throughout our lives? What's the first step? Well, the first step, and it's a great question, the first step is that we have to acknowledge. That's where I was at. We have to acknowledge that they, we have those walls in place. Some of us have had those walls for so many years that it seems a little scary to come out from behind those walls and, and really break them down. And so we have to acknowledge that first. You know, I always think of the story of Jesus with the man by the pool at Bethesda, and he asked him, he said, do you want to be well? And the man says, yes, I want to be well. We have to want to be well, first of all. So once we acknowledge that we have walls, then from there what we can do is um, we can lean into them and we can start in community to break them down. But you, you really hit it. We can't do it alone. We can't say, I am strong enough to do this myself. First of all, we need God. We cannot do anything without God's power and his yes. strength and through prayer and really asking God, what is it that you would like me to, to bring down? What fears do I have? What walls are hindering me from other relationships? And then we need to get with a mentor or trusted friend and we need to have them tell us what they see in us that's hindering us from relationships. And we need to do it in community. We need each other. That can be scary. It is. That can be intimidating, mm -hmm. you know, to be transparent enough, you know, to say, first of all, I have them. I have built walls. And second of all, I want to tear them down. Mm -hmm. And third of all, how do I do it? I mean, you've got to, you've got to, that can be a wall in and of itself. Oh, it absolutely can. But it's when so you start to do that, Mm -hmm. and you actually come in community with other women and you want to be free because when you're when you're behind a fortress of walls mm -hmm. that is not freedom no that is bondage I when you're agree. hiding from the truth mm -hmm. and you're hiding from reality and you're living in the lies of your own world um, but when you want to be free and you say okay I'm gonna start tearing these walls down mm -hmm. and I'm gonna ask women that I trust people that I trust to help me do it what ha what begins to happen well, you feel very vulnerable to begin with. It's a scary place to be saying, okay, I'm going to share with everybody, you know, the things that are keeping me hindered. But do you want to live in freedom or do you want to live a life with a blank journal or a passport that's never been stamped or, or never living life to the full? God has called us into this great relationship with him. And it is a scary world out there. There's a lot to fear, but we have a God who is greater than those fears. And he can move us to a place where we live in that perfect freedom with him. And we can, we can accomplish the things that we want to accomplish. And and live in our sweet spot, if you will. And then we know our God ordained purpose. And once we know that and we're living in that, that space, if you will, then we are living out what he has created us to be. And we are freer, we are happier, and um, not fearful. Anymore. So when we begin to do this work, and it can be hard mm. at times, yes. but yet it can be like a discovery. Absolutely. And finding, discovering a part of us that that's been covered up mm. or concealed uh, unexplored and you begin to taste freedom mm. and what is that like 
It is so empowering to feel like you are a warrior and you are living in that spot where God has created you. And it's interesting that you say that because my chapter two is who am I? And so once we actually discover, acknowledge our, our walls and we move past that and we acknowledge that we've got walls with God and with others and we've, we've got to talk about who am I in Christ and how do we live that in the real world? Because we always hear apart from Christ, you know, we are, we're nothing, but through him, that's our identity. And so how do we do that? How do we actually live that? And so many women cannot identify who they are. Yes. We get wrapped up so much in what we do, being a mother, a wife, a daughter, a businesswoman, all these things, and then we find our value there in the doing. Yes. And so what we need to do is recognize those traits that God has given us, the strength and the things that we love to do, and we need to really camp on those things and then combine with the gift of being a wife or a mother or a businesswoman works in conjunction with the gifts that we've been given as well. And then we're really living in that spot where God has ordained us to, to live. Yes, we are. We find our identity is not in what we do, mm -hmm. but it's in whose we are. Yes. And we are, we belong to Christ. We do. And we're, we are his and we, we bear his name and his mark upon our lives. And that is, that's freedom in and of itself. It absolutely is. Well, we, we, I want you to talk uh, for just a few seconds about the fact that you're married to a builder. Yes. So, you, so you, you're getting this knowledge like firsthand. You get to see this being fleshed out. I know we only, only have a few seconds for this segment, but just kind of tease us because we want to talk more about this after the break. Well, David had talked to me about structural walls and non-bearing non-structural walls and so I put that in chapter one of the book and it really does correlate with the walls that we build around our hearts and so I will I'll share with you I guess after the break yes, about what that looks like and what walls are, are healthy to have because we do have to have some that protect our hearts there are some healthy things that we have to have in our lives but the unhealthy walls need to come down oh well, we're gonna talk more about that this is good stuff. I like visual imagery mm -hmm. and the fact that your husband is a builder. We're going to talk more about that. Great. So don't go away because after this break, we're coming back with more of this great conversation. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after this. It's harder whenever there's a bigger group. Pretty much a good day for me would be people leaving their hands off of me. I'm always called names. Um, everywhere that I go, there's always someone um, calling me names, calling me gay. I've been choked. Um, thrown up against the wall, punched. Nobody's ever tried to help me. Mom was diagnosed with Alzheimer's at 58 years old. Eight years into the disease was when all the light went out. For me, it was heart-wrenching. Look into the eyes of somebody with Alzheimer's sometime, uh, you just don't see this, the, the person's soul is like gone. And it takes a toll on everyone. I mean, it's, it's, it's a depressing disease to watch unfold before your eyes. She actually thought those of us who were caring for her and who loved her most were her worst enemies. More and more responsibilities fell on my shoulders. This disease just ravages a family. It changes your life. The magnitude of it is indescribable. My mother taught me to be in the moment. We have to live in the moment with them. And I'm gonna be with that person right now in this moment, wherever she is. Now is the moment. If we work together, we can stop this epidemic. Contact Bright Focus and learn more. 
Welcome back to Babby's House. Today I'm talking with Donna Hetzler, and she is the author of Walls of a Warrior, Conquering the Fears of Our Hearts. Mm -hmm. And Donna, before we went to the break, you were telling us that your husband is a builder. He is. And a few years ago, my husband and I built the first house, that we, we built a house, the first house that I ever saw built from the foundation up. And it was fascinating. Mm -hmm. It was fascinating to see this big hole in the ground yes. and to see a foundation be laid and the walls uh, go up from there and then everything else, you know, it's not about the furniture on the inside and the color scheme. Before you get a color scheme and, the f and furniture, you got to have a, a strong f foundation. You absolutely so do. Talk You're to so us about right. what you're learning from your husband. Well, he's a wealth of information, and it's true. We tend to look at all the, the pretty stuff and all that, but if we don't have a good foundation, our base, then once we erect those walls, um, the good walls, which I talk about in my book, structural walls, you know, they help support the house. They keep it healthy. Yes. And so non-structural walls, they divide and they separate. So that's like your interior walls. And so those are our unhealthy walls. Those are the ones that keep us at bay from others. And so we need to bring those interior walls, if you will, or the ones that keep our heart um, separated from relationship. Those need to come down. And then the structural walls built on a good foundation, not a foundation of fear, but a foundation with, with power and love and with Christ. And so when we build those structural walls, those healthy walls, healthy walls consist of our boundaries. Boundaries are huge. Having those boundaries and relationships. Uh, love. We've talked about how God's love uh, is so great. There's no fear in love. So if we have love in our life and we're reflecting Christ, that's a healthy wall to have. Self-forgiveness is a huge one. We are so hard on ourselves as women. We tend to beat ourselves up about everything. So if we can learn to self-forgive and move on, learn from our experiences, our mistakes, and move on from there, super important, our esteem and how we esteem ourselves and not who we are apart from God, but we are daughters of the King. Yes. And so comparison can be a terrible thing that we do with one another, with women. Yes. And so if we can push that comparison away and say, I've got this trait, I love it, it's no better than you, it's just different, it's what God gave me, and then honor what your sister has, has gotten in her traits and what have you. So. And then I'm not intimidated. Exactly. By your success mm -hmm. or whatever it is that that God has given you the gifts yes. that he's given you I can celebrate you because I know who I am certainly and that is the power of esteeming my not just in me because there's nothing I mean I, apart from Christ I'm nothing but it's finding my esteem it's really God esteem and less self esteem and more God esteem Good finding time. my identity and my my ownership and my my kinship in him through Christ. Yes, and and being thankful for what he has given you yes. and your talents and, and not comparing those talents to somebody else. And you can say, God has given me this and I am gonna use what he has given me. I am going to love every gift that he has given me and own who you are. Not as the world tells us to own who we are because the world tells us to beef ourselves up and to tell us we're something special aside from God. But I'm talking about what God has given us and how we can live in him and really conquer our fears and become that strong warrior yes. that we were created to be. You know, when I, when I look at the media or oftentimes mm -hmm. if I'm sitting in the the line at the grocery store and I see the magazine and I see an, an image of what I'm supposed to look like. Mm. Well, she's, okay, I'm saying this in love, okay? <laughs> she's white, she's blonde, mm. she's thin, and she's young. Well, that just, that just puts me, that just builds up a wall between me and her. It does. And I said, well, where does that leave a person like me who's a grandmother, right. you know, and older and black with hips, mm -hmm. you know? But that, that's the world's definition of beauty. Yes. I'll tell you one of my favorite passages I discovered lately, Donna. It's Psalm 4511. Okay. And, the, and that says, the king is enthralled with your beauty. Mm, Honor him it. 
for he is your Lord. Mm. And when we begin to discover who we are and whose we are in our relationship with Christ, you talk about a game changer. It you changes. talk about freedom. You talk about walls coming down mm. and victory, being Amen. able to walk in love and then being able to celebrate my sister and, and my sister like you. Well, Donna, I want you to tell us, you know, about your ministry. Are you able to take this message on the road? Um, what are, how are women responding to this message? Talk to me about that. Certainly. What I am seeing is, as I mentioned, God is bringing the Jericho girls throughout Denver and one in California, one in Pittsburgh. So we're growing, which is exciting. But what we're seeing is that as women connect, and we have during our discussion time, um, within the group, we have times where we discuss some real tough problems, but then we break off to one-on-ones. And I think that's where the real beauty happens because women feel a little safer on the one-on-ones. And what we're seeing is women being empowered by sharing. Our stories have so much power. Yes. And we need to be and heard. Everybody has a story oh, we all that have is stories. worth telling. Absolutely so. And so our stories are so important, but just hearing and listening to somebody of course in a trusted group and we have guidelines of this is you know it needs to be in a trusted atmosphere yes but just the power of being heard so many times i'm a fixer yes. i want to fix it i want to hear your problem and i'm already thinking okay or, here's what we're going to do and here's you know here's yeah. the game plan yes. but when you stop i have a chapter chapter nine is stop drop and listen and it's just purely listening to somebody and not being able to respond while that person's talking well, i can't tell you how i bit my tongue like we are oh. just i mean it's like we are just touching the surface mm -hmm. of this of this subject yes. and we need to dig a little deeper and that is why this book walls of a warrior is so powerful can you tell us your your information online how we can get in contact with you absolutely it's donna hetzler.com and there it'll connect you to my agent don otis and if you'd like to start a jericho girls we'd be happy to get you started and do this in community and just empower yourself and be well, a woman thanks for being my guest today thank you and thank you for being my guest today as well god bless you we are so out of time i'll see you next time i love you see you next time here on babby's house